Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is all about AMD FX, as you may or may not have been able to tell from the huge Tower of FX shrine that we've built here in the Tech Tips lab. AMD is launching their all new FX cores if with the flagship part being the FX 8350 to completely replace the old FX's and we're going to tell you all about the performance of these brand new chips from advanced micro devices. Now one of the most important things from AMD's side is compatibility. So AMD has implemented complete backwards compatibility for their new FX8350 with 990FX series motherboards. So that means as long as you get a BIOS update from the motherboard manufacturer, make sure you check the CPU support list on the manufacturer website, you'll be able to run your all new pile driver based FX chip in the same motherboard you were using for your older bulldozer based CPU. Now AMD, yes, this is an eight core processor, but they've been enjoying their core count advantage over their competition Intel for quite some time already. The FX8150 had eight cores. So while we still have an eight core processor with the 8350, AMD has improved the clock speed and they've made architectural improvements to make the chip overall faster. Now it's time for some benchmarks. Now looking at overall system performance, I wanted to analyze three generations of AMD products. So we're going all the way back to the 1100T, that was their unlocked six core, to the FX8150 to the FX8350 using exactly the same platform because that's what AMD has managed to achieve here. A single socket AM3, AM3 Plus that is compatible with now three generations of premium unlocked overclocking ready processors. So in PC Mark 7, we go from 4100 PC Marks all the way up to 4700 PC Marks. So with each generation, we're seeing about a 10% improvement in overall all round system performance. Bearing in mind though, that this is a six core and these two are both eight cores. So this improvement is almost less impressive than this improvement because here we're seeing more like pure clock speed and the pure raw performance of the chip accounting for the performance delta. Next, we've got Sony Vegas. So when it comes to rendering video, you throw more cores at the problem. In this case, we didn't see as much of an improvement as we would have liked, but remember guys, bulldozer cores were not full cores in the same way that tubin cores were, okay? So this improvement is again, much more impressive because we threw more cores at the problem and didn't see much of an improvement last time around, but with the 8350, we are seeing as much as about a 15 to 20% performance difference versus the last generation chip. Now moving on to Cinebench OpenGL. So this is leveraging the graphics card to achieve the 3D rendering process that's going on here. And we're seeing a significant tangible improvement from 8150 to 8350, once again, over 10%. Whereas last generation, we really didn't see that improvement. So without, oh yeah, okay. So let's finish up without CPU. Again, we see going from six cores to eight cores really didn't yield much last time around. Whereas now we're seeing again, a tangible about 15% improvement. Now it's no secret that some enthusiasts were disappointed with the bulldozer launch, the 8150. However, I think now that we're seeing a much bigger generational gap in performance, we should be a little bit happier with what's come out of AMD with the 8350. But of course, you guys are primarily concerned with the gaming performance. So we're seeing a very similar pattern here again. On our test platform, the FX8350 dominates the 8150, whereas the 8150 and the 1100T were very, very close. So as much as a 10 to 15% performance improvement in StarCraft II, Skyrim, which is a predominantly CPU limited benchmark. So this is a great way to separate lesser CPUs from greater ones. We see, again, last generation, not much improvement. This generation, we do see some improvement. However, playing a game at anything over 100 FPS, you're probably not gonna notice much of a difference anyhow. Crisis 2, more of an enthusiast class game. The FX8150 does enjoy some architectural improvements over the 1100T, but the FX8350 takes it even further. Once again, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, guys, about a 10 to 15% improvement. So what does all of this mean? Basically, in a nutshell, FX8350 does everything 8150 did. It's unlocked, it has eight cores, it's got 16 megs of cache, but a little bit better. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips and don't forget to subscribe.